Good morning, everyone. It's not that many everyone's in here, but thank the Lord for the ones I do have, for the few that are here with me, for Clint and Wendy and Joy. Uh, it's always nice to have somebody out here. It makes it feel better. But this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Even the day that we're going through and what all's going on, it's still the day of the Lord, and God is still working. He has not stopped working, even in any of this. Uh, he's been blessing, and he's been moving for his people. And it's just a wonderful day to be alive in. Amen? So good to be in, even in the building. I know that he does not dwell in buildings made with hands. But we come together, and he dwells in us. And we come together in this building, and it feels good. Hopefully, we're, we're planning on trying to open up for services, uh, Lord willing, June 7th, that will be the first Sunday in the month of June. And if it's, if it's possible, we want to start coming together, of course, with guidelines and, and everything. But, but we, you know, I believe that uh, we have, we're doing what we're doing for the best of the people. Amen. For, for my congregation. But if you will, I want to uh, bring out some scripture this morning that the Lord has been giving me this week. It's been so good. All of his word is good. And you could, I could pick any one scripture out of the Bible and say, this is good and amen, and I, I love it. But, but certain things that the Lord deals with us on, it's, it's even better. But in Romans 12 and starting at verse 1, he talks about us being a living sacrifice. Amen. Holy, acceptable unto God. But Paul said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So it's not anything unreasonable that the Lord is asking us to do, is it? Nothing. I mean, our bodies, for what he did for us, <clears throat> excuse me, for him, what he did for us and hanging on that cross for us, for us to give our bodies to him that he can dwell in and move in and live in and, and be a, uh, we can be the vessel for it, is nothing for us to do, amen, to be able to be willing to do that. And verse two says, this is one of, one of my favorite verses, and be not conformed to this world or fashioned like this world, but be ye transformed or changed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good, acceptable, and per the perfect will of God. He didn't say that there were three wills of God. There was a good will of God, an acceptable will of God, and a perfect will of God. But he said that we might prove what is good, acceptable, and perfect in the Lord. Amen. So he, I believe there is three stages sometimes that we go in. Sometimes as babies, you know, we're in that good stage. And as we get to grow up in God and we become teenagers, we're in that acceptable age. But yet he wants to bring us to perfection and cause us to be that, that grown-up, perfect, child of God that he would have us to be in the earth not in men's eyes but in God's eyes he's he calls us amen uh and then if you will turn with me to Ephesians chapter one and this was something how that uh Wednesday night uh actually Pastor Crystal went on on uh Facebook and did a little message a little sermonette and and hers was Ephesians one and it was cute because I had I had texted her and told her I said that's exactly the scripture I had for Sunday. She said, well, you go ahead and do it too and reiterate on it. See, what, sometimes when the Lord does that, that's, that's the mind of the Spirit and what God's saying. He's putting things together because he's bringing us into one mind and one, one accord. Amen. One accord in him. And when he does that, then that word is driven home. I'm not trying to add anything to what she said because it was awesome. And, and praise God for it. But I just want to read a little bit in this myself. And Ephesians 1 and 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Has he not done that? Has he not blessed us? with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. He even said in one place that he would cause us to sit in heavenly places in him. And that's when we sit. To sit means to actually to reign or to rest. And, and he said he would cause us to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Thank God that we can sit in those heavenly places in the spirit and, and reign with him in Christ. Listen to this. According in verse 4, 
according as he has chosen us in them before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of the children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to his good pleasure of his will, to the praise and the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the blood. Amen. In him and whom we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Praise God that he is, his grace is so rich that he chose us in him. That's a long time ago when you think about it. Having predestined us according to the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to his good pleasure of his will. Amen. So he, if he chose us before the foundation of the world was, that's a long time ago. And we, but that doesn't mean just because he chose us in him, that we're going to reach that place unless we, by faith, take that and walk by faith and walk in that thing that God said, and then we can become what he would have us to be. We, to be predestined means to he has, re, he has already predetermined and preset what we're supposed to be in Christ. So don't ever think that God hasn't got a purpose and a will for your life and a destination for you. I ministered here a while back, uh, sometime back on, on this uh, to the church here. And that G, to, I called it God's GPS or God's plan of salvation for our lives individually. Because I believe he has a plan for the church as a whole, but I believe individually God has a plan for each one of our lives. And, and he has predestined or preset us. You know, I was thinking, and I brought this illustration out, how in, in, in our car, when we set our navigation, you know, I've set my navigation before traveling. And, and whenever you set it to a certain destination, that's exactly where it wants to carry you to. And that's where it's preset to. That's where it's determined already that you're going. But how many of you know, sometimes we have to get out of the car and go to the restroom or get something to eat or get gasoline. And, and, and <clears throat> excuse me, and then our GPS will speak, you know, speak out to us. And it says, you have left the plan route. So see that God has a plan route for our life. His GPS for our life and plan of salvation is for his will in our life. And if sometimes you can veer off and, and get off the plan of salvation, you can get off that plan route that God has for your life. But it's up to us, and it's, how many of you know that when, when that GPS goes off and says you've left the plan route, it'll usually ask the question, do you want to continue on the route, or do you want to cancel it, or, or you know, you want to, in other words, reset it again. And you say yes, or you push the button, yes, you want to reset it. And so many times I think when people get off that, off that plan route that God has for them, they forget to reset that that destination that God has in our life. That's that faith that has to be activated in us, actually, is what that is. We have to have our faith activated again and say, yes, I'm going to continue on this route. I want to continue on the route that you've got me on, Lord. So that's our true destiny. That's the place God has us. And I have seen it. I've heard people say, you can't miss it. You can't miss God. If you're called, you can't miss it. But I'm sorry, I have seen people miss it and, and went to their grave without going into that place that God had. And that's because they never, by faith, activated that button again and said, Lord, reset my destination. I want what you have predestined me for. See, Paul talked about it this way, to lay hold of that that's laid hold of me. So something laid hold of me. And I've always known since I was even a little kid that I was called different. I've always known that, that there was something special God had me called for. I might not have understood it all. If I had, I probably would have ran harder than I did. <laughs> But, you know, we, we because it's not all an easy road. You learn by the things that you go through. You always have hurdles in this destination. But but yet, yes, I've always known, even as a kid, I could, I could feel the presence of the Lord. I could feel God dealing with my life, even as a child. He would deal with me on things, and he would touch my heart. And I'm thankful for that. Aren't you glad that you're one of those that God has had his hand on ever since you were actually... Before we were even formed in our mother's womb, and I have a scripture on that one in a minute. But he wants us to reset our original destination, say, yes, I want to stay on the plan route. Amen. Because there's too many that have not done that. And it's like Pastor Crystal was saying, so many that are called, you know, you can be called according to the will of God. But if we don't, we don't give ourselves to that call and lay hold of that thing, as Paul talked about, that laid hold of us. 
then we may never, never become that thing that God would have us to, God forbid. But in Romans 8, 28, um, I want to go there. Another couple of scriptures before I'm done here. Amen. Uh, how many of you like these little short sermonettes? <laughs> Sometimes I think we get more when it's shorter because you cram in what really you feel like the Lord is saying and, and uh, get it across, amen, without trying to go off on rabbit trails, so to speak. Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. See, it's his purpose, his plan, his, his GPS in our life that he's called us for. Amen? So he said, for whom he did foreknow. So he foreknew us. Isn't that good? He knew us before we were. Isn't that good? Oh, I love it. He did, he did predestinate, or in other words, he preset you to go and to be conformed to the image of his son or made in that same likeness that he is, that he might be the, that we might be the firstborn among many brethren, that he might be the firstborn among them, and that we might be some of those brethren. He's the firstborn and we're the, we're the rest, amen, that he was trying to bring to himself. Moreover, who he did predestinate, them he also called. And who he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Praise God. It's not our justification, is it? It's what he did for us, what he did, and how he called us and justified us. David said it like this in Psalms 139 and 13, and I won't even go there, but I do have one more. Well, I don't have to even go to these. I'll just go ahead and just give them and read them to you. David said in Psalms 139 and 13, David said, Thou hast possessed my reins, or my mind, Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Can imagine that, how he covered you when you were in your mother's womb. That's one reason I'm so adamant about abortion. Because just think, if my mother had aborted me, where would, you know, I wouldn't be here and be able to fulfill this call and be predestined for what God's called me for. Because even in our mother's womb, he covered us. Hallelujah. Woo, I love that. He knew me before the foundation of the world. He knew me. Hallelujah. And he formed me in my mother's womb. Listen to this. He, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb or protected me. And he's still protecting us, isn't he? He still covers us. He still looks after us. Jeremiah said it this, this way. Before, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. Amen. That's, that's a good while ago, isn't it? Some people say, well, you're, you're, it's not a child until they're, you know, until they're so many months old. No. He said, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. Wow. Hallelujah. I don't know about anybody else, but that does something for me. Because I know that there was a plan for my life, even from the time I was a child. I'll tell you one little story, and then I'm going to be done. When we were kids, we used to, what we call play church. But it, we weren't playing. We were serious. But... My brother Winston at the time was, was the only guy that we had in the family. My brother Clint wasn't even thought of that way back then. And I was a little girl, and there was Ann and Theta and us, and we were all in there having church. You know, we, and Mom and Daddy just loved it. They knew that they were raising us up right. When, when we did in our spare time, we wanted to have church. That was pretty good. So we were kids, and we would be in the, in the room having church, and my brother would be hitting a board or hitting something like that, acting like he was playing the piano. And, and you know, that it's just like, it's almost like pr prophetic because later he played the piano. He plays the piano and, and worships and, and blesses God that way. And and they would make me be the preacher. That was so funny. They would say, okay, Sheriff, sure, it's time for you to preach. Amen. Little did they know that even God then had his hand on my life and called me for what he called me for. And I didn't call myself. If I had a uh, it wouldn't have been me, probably. You know, I would have called, said, Lord, why don't you use this one or that one or the other? They're more qualified. They're more, you know. But the Lord doesn't call us because we're qualified. He qualifies us when he calls us. Amen. So I'm thankful for that call of God in my life. And your GPS is set. So stay on the plan route, that plan that God has for your life, and you'll come through victorious. Amen. Remember, every one of you that, that come to, you've been so wonderful. Most of you have been so wonderful about your tithes and offerings, and I appreciate it. Without that, I couldn't keep going myself, and so 
I understand, and I love you for it, and I appreciate every one of you. Hope to see y'all very soon. Amen. All of your smiling faces. I see three today, but to see the rest of the smiling faces in this place be awesome. Amen. I love you. God bless you. Amen.